Hello, everyone. It's Christy Bird McKeeve. I'm the CEO of Healthy Rural California. And today I'm going to talk about graduate medical education. And this is a specific message to physicians and other healthcare providers and leaders who are in Butte County and our neighboring areas, um, because there's just a lot of information swirling around. And I want to uh, make sure that Everybody's on the same page. Today is Monday, June 19th, 2023, I think. Um, and so I'm going to share uh, my screen as I talk through this. Um, I am super thrilled uh, to be sharing as much information as I can with the community. We have just gotten to the printers our next magazine. It's called Advancing Health in Northern California. It's going to be mailed to all of the physicians and practice staff that we have in our database uh, sometime in the next week or so. So be on the lookout for that. It has a picture of a white daisy on the front cover uh, that says hope, because that's really what we're doing here and uh, very exciting um, to be sharing that message. Also, last week, I had a chance to speak to the Chico Sunrise Rotary and a uh, great group, very energetic, especially for 7 a.m. But um, I basically got some really great feedback from the community uh, in general, uh, just about what the work that we're doing. And so I'm hopeful that we can all be ambassadors for graduate medical education champions. I know that's a lot to ask when you're not actually maybe understanding what's actually happening. Um, and so I just, I'm putting it out there. <laughs> I'm putting it out there. Just as a reminder, our efforts to establish graduate medical education and bring medical students to the area is to bring more doctors to the region. There has been no medical education pathway north of Sacramento up until Reading. Reading has their own GME programs in family medicine and a new one in internal medicine but none in Butte County in Chico or Oroville up until this point. And so we know that one of the only ways that's sort of a sustainable and almost guaranteed um, investment is medical education uh, because people choose to come to these programs because they're from the area or they wish to be in the area or they come and they stay and they're not really sure but they love it and they want to stay. And so without a strong, long pathway for medical education, I think the area has really been hurting. And uh, maybe this could be the way that we turn, turn things around. And, and besides, when you have residents coming to the area, they're actually providing care while they're learning, especially in years uh, two and three for family medicine and years three and four for psychiatry. So um, they also bring new perspectives. They can help uh, bring some new energy to the community. Um, we think it's, we've heard actually, psychiatry and family medicine together, very innovative. So over the last decade or so, if you've been in the GME world, you would have seen that there's been a ton of family medicine residencies, especially in rural communities that have been really promoted and funding available. Uh, but not so much psychiatry, but now what I'm seeing in the landscape is that the family medicine and residency programs want to also have psychiatry. And so I feel like we're ahead of the ahead of the game. We're leaders already. Uh, for those who don't know, we got accredited for our psychiatry residency in um, February of this year. And that's really it's just been a wonderful stamp of approval for all things medical education, actually. I heard the other day some sad news that there was still disbelief that we can have graduate medical education in Butte County. Well, believe it, uh, we got accredited for psychiatry and we are moments away, possibly just in within the next few weeks of submitting a new family medicine residency curriculum to be accredited by ACGME, hopefully. Uh, so those two programs together would be game changers for the community and they are viable. They're very strong curricula, um, and we're excited to be the engine at Healthy Rural California, bringing them alive. Um, also, at the very minimum, the family medicine and psychiatry residency programs will be bringing $5 million a year to Chico. Um, it's possible if Enlo considers additional residency programs um, 
that it could be up to eight or nine million dollars a year. I think that's pretty significant. Um, and also just a, you know, a wonderful value that we should not overlook. So lifting up our clinical partners and driving revenue to hospitals, uh, that is also another major effort that graduate medical education can do. And then many people are rooting from us from all over the state and the country, because when the psychiatry residency got accredited also with the grant funding that Healthy Rural California has raised to make this all possible, um, we have gotten a lot of attention and a lot of people are supporting us. So I wish I could convey that to you in a, in a bottle, and um, <laughs> but that's this is the only way I can do it in this video. So this is really about expectations and timelines. You must know if there's anything you take away from this video is that we are a unique sponsoring institution. We're not the only ones, but we're definitely unique. And you may not know what the actual structure of our programs are. Um, so first and foremost, you know, traditional graduate medical education has a medical school nearby and a hospital, and they have had residents for decades, sometimes a decade, but usually a lot more. And so, and those were always like a medical school. And then, then there were residents and just people went through their residency programs at some point, you know, in the last 40 years, depending on how old you are and how advanced you are in your career. And so your expectations are that what we're doing in Chico is is comparable. Um, so it will be, or we do have some really great academic affiliations and, and most importantly with UC Davis, who was the first to give us an academic affiliation agreement. And then the second that we have is Toro University College of Osteopathic Medicine. We're very happy to be working with both, looking at a regional campus for each of total of 20 to 25 medical students starting in 2025, year 2025. We also have a lot of collaborative work with Stanford University, and we hope to be doing um, didactics with them as well for the psychiatry residency. But we are not a clinic at Healthy Rural California, and we're not a medical school. We're not a hospital. What we're building are consortium models, which means that Healthy Rural California itself doesn't have any other revenue. And so a lot of people have mentioned, gosh, it would be really great if you paid the faculty we intend to, but you need to hear me out of why today, June 2023, I don't have an answer for that. Uh, and it is largely because we are still in launch mode. We're not going to have any residents to teach until 2024. And actually, that first year of the psychiatry residency will be with the VA and UC Davis. And those folks already have faculty stipends baked into their um, payments, their stipend, you know, however the those different entities structure it. Um, and so we're sort of still trying to figure out how do we make this all happen, but literally no faculty will be teaching residents until 2025 in Chico. So you give me, can you give me some grace and some time to figure it out? Um, so here we have a slide about how what we've been doing and why in today's answer, I can't be clear on any sort of amount of money to give our faculty as stipends. Um, so first and foremost, Healthy Rural California had received accreditation to be a sponsoring institution in 2022. I'm sorry, we got it at late 2021. Um, and so I'm not gonna go through everything on that slide, but the top bar really does show that there's been a lot of work and a lot of effort, but we have been accredited as a sponsoring institution by, by ACGME, and that enables us to submit the specialty applications. And so we do, really didn't um, have the ability to submit for the psychiatry residency until 2022, and that went in on August 30th, 2022. And then we received the accreditation from ACGME in February of 2023. So that's also the sponsoring institution timeframe that we had a site visit for that accreditation. 
And then also you'll note that we have just launched an initial, initial feasibility evaluation of Enlo Medical Center, and we'll be looking at the community as well to determine what other residency programs are possible because once Enlo partners with us for family medicine and the first cohort arrives in 2025, we will be triggering their cap. We will be using CMS reimbursement rates. And so that's a whole other shift. Um, so when you look at the psychiatry residency, I um, want to also be very clear that we will not be accepting any CVs or applications except through the ARAS system, which is what the country uses by and large, and uh, announcements will be made March 15th on match day, 2024. Um, I'm very clear on that because we've literally received more than a hundred emails and we continue to receive them still from people just demanding, eager, wanting to be part of our psychiatry residency, there is a greater demand than there are residency slots in the United States. Um, and we're feeling that very much. And so we have decided as a team to remain in the ARAS program. And we're anticipating and preparing for about 400 plus applications for four slots. Um, and that those that first cohort would begin in June, July of 2024. We are looking for a cohesive cohort. We do not have the capability to receive applicants who want to start year two because that's our first year and we want the first cohort to be together all starting in year one. Uh, we've also started medical student rotations. Those people have uh, really taken time, either two to four weeks to get to know us and for us to get to know them they will too need to apply through ARAS. There's no special exceptions just because somebody did a medical student rotation with us. And we're being very clear with everyone about that. It's on our website, it's in all of our email messages. Um, and that's what we're saying. If I sound really adamant about it, it's because we've already received more than a hundred people demanding to have a slot in our residency program. And we haven't even launched it yet. So I'm trying to be, Everybody's trying to be as fair and equitable and holistic as we possibly can. We've been doing our research. We're developing a selection committee, and that selection committee will begin soon after ARAS opens September 15th. We've heard that medical students tend to apply within that first 24 to 48 hours that ARAS opens. So we're poised to move quickly and move through what could potentially be 50 or more interviews between September and January in order for the selection committee to make the final decisions of who will be in that first cohort. It's very exciting. Um, and I, it's just a little overwhelming to have so much interest in something that's brand new. And uh, we're still actually finalizing the curriculum. Um, you only have to submit about 80% of the, of the curriculum to be accredited. Uh, the fourth year of the program will be all electives, and those electives did not have to be fully defined in our application for accreditation, and so we're still in the midst of doing that and developing the business agreements. This goes back to the faculty stipends. So psychiatry will be funded through teaching health center dollars. That enables us to apply for those federal awards every year. They are only a certain amount, and I can't actually tell you what that amount is right at this moment because the federal government did agree, thankfully, to pay for, um, to renew, sorry, renew that award system through the Teaching Health Center funds, but they've also discussed increasing the amount that would be available, and I hope they do because uh, in the past, it has been $160,000 per resident per year, and that might seem like a lot, but when you have to have a certain number of hours dedicated for the program director, uh, program coordinator, possibly APD in order to keep everything going, um, you know, there's staff <laughs> that have to be um, part of the accreditation. It requires that you have a program coordinator at a certain level. And so we're still, we have grant funding to launch, thankfully, with the Butte County Behavioral Health um, HCI Award. Um, and so we're 
we're on track and it's all in good shape, but I can't literally do any sort of Excel spreadsheet that says how much money would be available to pay faculty when the residents start and particularly in 2025 when they come into the Chico area after their first year at the VA at Mather and at UC Davis and in Woodland at Northern Valley Indian Health. Um, so you gotta give us some grace, you gotta give us some time, you gotta look at the expectations that we have here of when we can make decisions for the psychiatry residency faculty to be paid, but also how many, you know, just the steps that have to be taken because, you know, I hear this all the time. Well, other residency programs do that. True, true, but they've also been around for 40 years or they have tremendous amount of funding because they're at a hospital and that hospital has other revenue that they can give. We are not a hospital and we will have teaching health center funding. Now, family medicine will be structured differently. Uh, we are very hopeful to get that application for accreditation in soon. Um, we have funding to get to 2025 when we plan for the first cohort to matriculate. Um, so we don't wanna push it any further than that. It might stretch our dollars too far, too thin if we go beyond 2025 matriculation. Um, and so in this moment, I am asking, Dr. Moirano is asking, Dr. Schroll is asking for faculty to agree to teach starting in 2025, possibly 2026, depending on what year in the program you would be slotted for your residence rotation. Um, and so we can't tell you right now anything about the business agreement or much because we're not even accredited. If we don't get this application in, there's no chance of ever getting accredited. And without accreditation, there are no residents in our program. So we have to focus. We need to get physicians excited. We need physicians to agree to teach the residents fully knowing that we don't know yet how much to pay you. Now, here's the other part of it. We're so grateful because Enlo Medical Center has agreed to be the primary hospital and has agreed to do another feasibility evaluation to see what other residency programs could be possible before they reach the year 2030 and their cap would never allow them to have any more additional CMS reimbursements for any other residency slots if it hasn't been established in 2030. Um, so we are, it's a big lift and we're so grateful but it really will take some, you know, sort of understanding of where we are in that process, which is simply we got to get the accreditation application in and we have to have certain requirements um, in order to meet that accreditation. For example, a dermatologist. We know you're busy, but we've structured it so that the dermatology one month rotation as required by ACGME uh, it has some video support um, from different resources, and it would really only be about a half day per resident per month. So it's not a big lift. And so at this moment, you're not probably going to see a resident until 2026. So if you could just say yes, that you would be faculty and give us the CV, uh, help us understand what um, you know particular scholarly activity you've done recently or faculty development. Also that we will be supporting everyone with faculty development and scholarly activity. But honestly, none of this matters unless we get accredited. And once we're accredited, then I can work on those business agreements. We're gonna be doing CMS reimbursement rates for Enlo's family, the family medicine residency through Healthy Rural California at Enlo Medical Center. And so those reimbursement rates will go to and low, and then we'd have to negotiate in our business agreements once we're accredited to see how much money would be uh, available to, to, to give faculty stipends, or perhaps Enlo can figure out how and project the additional revenue that would come in from having residents seeing patients, um, and then do that, cal that calculation about what they could probably offer as faculty stipends. I wanna thank Dr. Chester Austin, who's the Chief Medical Officer at Northern Valley Indian Health. We had a meeting on Friday evening. It was our virtual academic forum and Dr. Austin made a good point, which is that we're still in launch mode. 
Um, and yes, faculty stipends are important, but in this moment, we've just got to get the application in. And frankly, you know, the staff should be paid for the work that we're doing. And thankfully, we have grants that can do that, but they're only to get to when the residents start. And then when the residents start is when the CMS reimbursements would start. And that's not until 2025. So we're <laughs> just, it's a big lift. But here's, here's should be some reassuring words. Very few people on this planet have been part of a brand new graduate medical education program from the very beginning, which is what I have up here on the slide. Very few people. You get to experience all of it. It's just exciting. You can take that into the world as something that, that is very helpful to um, help others establish new graduate medical education programs. It's not easy. It's not anything that most people know. I wouldn't have been able to tell you in 2019, just four years ago, oh, I'm going to become kind of this expert in graduate medical education and in launching new programs. I did not know that four years ago. So feel free to learn with us. Ask us lots of questions. Um, I continue to try to find ways to share this information. Uh, I'm kind of turning to the community, though, because we need to do some fundraising again. We're just a nonprofit that happens to be a sponsoring institution. Um, I would love to have an endowment of at least five million that would generate enough per year that we could spin off four percent that would then enable the board and staff to um, have some discretionary funds each year. Why couldn't that be a faculty stipend fund? And then we wouldn't have to sit here every year wondering what the CMS reimbursement rates or whether the federal government is gonna re-up the teaching health center funding and, and how will that affect the faculty stipends? We could actually generate an endowment that would help that go forward um, and grow possibly with time as well. Um, so there's a lot on my plate, but I really do love hearing from you questions. They help us define the information that we need to share. I will probably also note that for family medicine, we'll, we'll um, likely follow the same pattern for using ARAS for our applications. Um, family medicine residency programs are continually changing throughout the country. Um, and we would like to be, again, fair and holistic in our approach to finding the right candidates, probably have a different steering committee with possibly different uh, selection criteria. I don't know. I can't predict that. Again, when we get accredited, we'll have all of that put into place. Um, and that accreditation might not happen now until mm, June of 2024. Uh, so, you know, we have to, we have to get through the steps of accreditation. Um, and then we can all just have fun and build, finalize the program uh, going forward. So I'm thrilled to know that we are viable, we are feasible. Um, you know, for those who are doubting whether we can do graduate medical education in Butte County, we're doing it. We're, we're going to have our first cohort of psychiatry residents very soon. Um, and I look forward to celebrating match day, March 15th, 2024, when we get to find out who our uh, first cohort of residents will be and, and celebrate that moment with you. I'm sure there's more questions, but I'm going to wrap up for now. I have a board meeting tomorrow night. I need to get ready for that. Um, and uh, thank you for listening. And together we can be stronger and together we can really build these programs to be accredited. You might just have to take a leap of faith and, and believe in this process a little bit um, until we can get better answers. Um, and just know that uh, Dr. Harwood gave a wonderful envisioning uh presentation on Friday at our virtual academic forum. And she wanted us to all close our eyes and imagine in 10 years time, sitting 
at a table or on a virtual meeting where we have new doctors and we have residents and we have medical students and we have all of these programs up and running and how exciting that will be. And then she talked about going back to the 1800s when a doctor named en Dr. Enlo came to Chico, uh, one of the first doctors in the region. And soon enough, he had a vision to build a hospital. And I'm sure there was lots of disbelief. Why would you build a hospital in Chico? What, what is this? There's no way this is going to be successful. And look, Enlo's very successful. So sometimes it just takes that vision and understanding what we're talking about not jumping to conclusions that we're a fully funded medical school with like clinical operations from a hospital that's supporting us. We're, we're a unique unicorn here at Healthy Real California with our nonprofit consortium model, but it's truly the engine that is making graduate medical education happen in Chico and it's working. I hope you can join us. Thank you.